Hi everyone, it is April, can you believe it? Time is going so fast, so let's slow things down with a lovely bit of word art. Uh, grab your paints and let's get started. Right, so for our April word art, I like to offer a slightly different approach for each word art of the month. So I'm gonna begin by just drawing in some stems, some curved stems that are all sort of floating in the air but coming from a sort of slight central focus point, okay? Um, so we don't need the pencil for now. Um, now, I've just been mixing up here a very, very dilute mix, which is going to become daisy petals, so seemingly white paint. So what I've done is I've mixed up a mixture of burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue, some green gold and just added a ton of water to it and the more dilute we can get it in the palette well here that means that it will be a beautiful um, seemingly white flower on here so i'm going to start off with some daisies because daisies are a seasonal april flower and I am going to paint quite loose today. Um, so I'm going to just begin by painting in some petals of a daisy that is sort of facing upwards. We're not we're gonna see a huge amount of the, the full face of the flower. So I'm using my size zero brush from the Pro Art Masterstroke range that I sell in my Etsy shop that I adore. Um, they've just got great snap is the main thing. They're synthetic bristles and they are super cool. So you can see here we've got this kind of almost like an exploding sort of firework of, of petals. If you wanted a bit more of a guide what you can do is give yourself a little pencil circle to have your petals anchored into. Um, for this one, you'd have more of an oval shape, but this one I'm going to paint in a full open-faced daisy. And you know, this paint is very translucent, but gradually we're gonna watch it crisp up and the edges will suddenly become quite clear and clean. And in painting these petals just sort of overlapping into that central circle. It means that we have a consistent central point for our petals and they end up working much better. Your flower won't sort of float off and, and look all sort of strange and uneven because you've anchored your petals into the middle. So on the whole, I'm painting my petals fairly spaced out doesn't matter if you do get a bit of a, a bleed in a blend, but essentially what I want to do is to create these separate petals and then let them dry and then come back in once they've dried with a bit more of a second layer of petals. So I'm just going to paint these in, in, in various places, and then we can let them dry and do the second layer. And now these have dried and you can see how that very, very dilute paint has crisped up and created clear petals. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to paint in petals in the gaps. And these two will crisp up and we'll get a lovely layer a double layer of petals. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to paint in uh, the next flower and this will give this one time to dry partially because I want to make the most of the wetness of those top layers of petals and I'm going to paint in the centre and I'm hoping that just that slight wetness of the top layer of petals will, will lead to a bit of a, a bleed of colour and we'll get a lovely spreading out of the yellow centre into the daisy just because I quite like the idea of that. 
So I'm just keeping an eye on that one whilst I paint this one in. Watercolour is so much about timing um, and also your, the conditions in which you're painting. If you're painting in a really hot climate, your paint is going to dry much faster than how it's drying on my page at the moment because it's a bit of an overcast day even though it is spring and we are in April just about. Okay so I've made a nice cadmium yellow cadmium orange mix that's more on the yellow side and this I'm just going to do a, a sort of fairly rough center of that flower and I'm really happy that I'm seeing little bits of bleed and actually I think I'm gonna go for it with this one yeah look at that that's kind of fun I just want this piece to have a slightly loose quality to it so I'm just going to repeat these uh, second layer of petals and the center of the daisy with each of the flowers now Now this one here, I've actually painted to be having the daisy facing away from us. So we're only gonna see the underside. So instead of yellow, I'm just gonna use a little bit of green and yellow mixed together, sap green and cadmium yellow mixed in. Right, so we're going to leave these daisies just to settle in for a bit. And now I'm going to paint another seasonal April flower and that is the sweet pea, which is another flower I absolutely love to paint and also uses this um, loose sort of layered technique. So I've got cobalt violet here, which is a really nice uh, sweet pea petal color. I will mix in a little bit of permanent rose just to get a little bit more of a pink tone. And what I'm going to do is I am going to just use a size six brush to create some lovely large petals in and amongst the daisies. Um, these also are going to need some time to crisp up. So at the moment I'm just sort of creating a little bit of a C curve, a little bit of a question mark, then coming around the other side and then filling it in. And at the moment I just want sort of a single petal here and there. And we're going to let those dry. Um, now, whilst I'm waiting for those to dry, I can do a little bit more on my daisies. So I have got a, a cadmium yellow sap green mixture here. And what I want to do now is just get a little bit of that greeny color in on the sort of bottom half of the flower. That one's still a bit wet. Just dabbing the dots a little bit. We're just going to be slowly building this up to sort of create a rather nice loose effect and then all of a sudden it will look wonderful. So we're going to let these petals dry and come back once they are. With a piece like this it's lovely because there's always plenty to be doing so I'm now um, just while we wait for the sweet peas to 100% dry I've got a little bit of sap green and green gold mixed up and I'm just adding one further layer to the bottom half of the center of my daisies and all of a sudden from what seemed like quite a sort of strange messy approach we've suddenly got lovely daisy shapes emerging and then from underneath we'll just give a little bit of a darker green. Now our sweet pea petals have dried so it's time to add some layered up petals. So I mean sweet peas grow technically you have a one central petal then two side petals sort of coming off from the center but in loose watercolor we can 
play around a bit. We don't have to be completely strict. So if you might only see a second one coming off or just a little one there. And of course we want to really help create this composition so wherever a petal needs to go we can put it. Just constantly adding water to my palette. lovely and these are going to crisp up once again and then we are almost ready to put in the stems and do some actual word art over the top right time for some stems so I'm going to mix up a bit more of this green gold and sap green mixture and I'm just getting more water on the brush because I don't want it too dark because we do have word art going over the top of this. We want it translute, translute, translucent to a point. So I'm going to start on the side and using my size zero brush that feels like a good kind of size. Now a sweet pea stem rarely sort of just goes in a nice polite curve. Um, so I'm just going to place in those stems first and then we'll add in leaves. But like I said, the daisies will follow the nice curve that I drew, but the sweet peas will probably dart about a bit more. Now we've got all our stems drawn in, it's much more easy to see where there might be some gaps, like here, or the piece is all a little bit over that side of the page, we might want to add a little something there. So instead of putting in something that we've already painted, what's nice here is then to be able to add maybe a bit of a filler flower. Um, so I'm just mixing up a bit of French ultramarine blue with some cobalt violet and I'm going to get a slightly greener mix for a stem and I'm going to do just a little sort of filler flower that isn't as of anything too specific but I'm going to just place in a very very dilute curve there might have it sort of coming up a little bit and then You could say this is like a sort of large lavender or something, something a little like that. But it's just a really handy little flower to be able to fill in a few gaps. So let me do that again and we'll talk it through. So I think I'm going to pop one in here. So with the cobalt violet, I'm just going to sort of dab the brush on a bit of an angle. And just allow it to bleed into the stem there. And it could be as simple as that, or you could add in another just sort of, hmm, maybe another one just in there. But it, as I say, it's just a little helpful filler. And you can see I'm being really quite loose with it. Because also we need to add in just a few 
little leaves for our sweet peas in particular. So I'm just taking a size two brush, a bit more color on it. And I'm just going to add here and there little leaves of the sap green variety with the sap green mixture of the uh, green gold. And then the other bit of a sweet pea that I absolutely love is that curly little little spring that you see. Just can spiral and then wiggle. I like that's how I like to do it. I like to do one curl. And my brush is quite vertical on the page. Um, where can we pop one in? There we go. It's just easier to turn and change direction when your brush is that kind of vertical angle to the page. And then a daisy quite often has a little leaf here and there, just a little one. If you stick your hand in your paint, well, don't worry. No one's perfect. Also, I think I can salvage that one. That's the only tricky thing of painting in loose watercolour is you have to be careful not to get your hand stuck. Okay. Now, my plan is to write April around there. But what I want is I want to have a few of the stems coming a bit further down. So I am just going to extend one or two of them just a bit further down. Just so we've got a bit more of an overlap. So I'll let that all dry and then we'll be ready to do our wording. So I've extended the stems down. I've also added one or two just to really sort of fill out this uh, little section. And now I am going to write April in a sort of brush lettering style. Um, Okay, now I know that a lot of you will be like, how do we do that? Um, but uh, I mean, I am not a calligraphy teacher, but I highly recommend there's a, there's a huge amount of amazing uh, lettering tutors on YouTube. But essentially, all you want to do is you just have a, have a close look at these letters whilst I mix up this black and blue mix. And you'll see, actually, when you're doing it in pencil, you're just writing in a joined up style, just a little bit loopy, and you can copy exactly what I've done. But the real sort of way of making it calligraphy or brush lettering style is the thin and thick that we do when we're painting with the brush. And this all comes right back to doing botanical brush strokes, um, where we sort of press when we want a thicker line and go sort of lighter when we want a hard line. But I, um, having my brush quite sort of vertical on the page, I've got a size two brush and there are gonna be times that I want a nice thin line and then I press it down and create a thicker line there. As a left-hander, I find it a lot easier to come uh, and paint backwards. But essentially, all I'm doing is I'm now filling in the lettering that I've written. I think the only sort of slightly strange letter is the R. 
for non calligraphers. It's an old fashioned R. But I encourage you to have a go because really it's just about getting rid of your fear of trying something new and worrying that you might ruin it because you're not going to ruin it. You're creating. But I think one thing that I tend to do is my sort of joining lines between the letters are thinner and it's when I'm coming downwards on a stroke that I go thicker so I'm going up here and now just like when I do calligraphy with my calligraphy pen the pressure is when I'm coming downwards and there we have a rather nice it's funny I'm in two minds of whether I smooth that out I don't think I need to tidy it up too much maybe just a little bit quite like the raw edge but there we have our April word art thanks so much for watching I really hope you enjoyed that one I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy and if you enjoyed it then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one if you're sharing your work on social media just tag us at the Winton paper coat and the best place for that is Instagram and finally if you don't want to miss another video then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and you'll never miss us. Okay, until next time. Bye!